With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, my brethren, we shall be reading from the book of Zephaniah. The book of Zephaniah. Chapter 1, chapter 1, and verse 14. So we'll be reading from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, and verse 14. Chapter 1, and verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. I will bring distress upon men, and I shall walk like blind men, because I have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like refuse. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. Gather yourselves together, yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the degree is issued or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld His justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon desolate. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you. O Canaan, land of the Philistines, I will destroy you so there shall be no inhabitant. The sea coast shall be pastures, with shelters for shepherds, and folds for flocks. The coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Thou shalt feed their flocks there, in the houses of Ashkelon, thou shalt lie down at evening. For the Lord their God will intervene for them, and return their captives. Amen. Zephaniah, a man of God, a servant of God. His name means the protection. The protection is from God. King, in those times, was Osiah, whose name means that God protects. And the situation of the people of Israel, miserable. God has prophesied, and He prophesied with Zephaniah now, that many bad things will come to the people of Israel, to the people of God, the chosen people of God in those times. In other words, today we would say in the Church of Christ, many bad things will come because firstly, they did not observe the Word of God. Secondly, they abandoned and they departed from the presence of God. And thirdly, they came to the point to offer sacrifices to other gods. So these three characteristics provoked the wrath of God. And God now calls them a nation that's undesirable. A nation which is shameful before God. This nation hasn't got the fear of God, doesn't take under account what's good or bad before God. And so, therefore, Zephaniah prophesied in the same way that the former prophets prophesied. And also, the modern prophets with him, he prophesies that the day of the Lord is near and it hastens quickly. The day of wrath, distress, trouble, a day of devastation and desolation. 
a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And for the people of Israel and for all the nations of the earth and in that region. And calamity does come. And we are now around 650 BC. Calamity does come from the north, from the empire of the Chaldeans, who the king of was Nebuchadnezzar, who is called by God my servant, because he will do, execute, in his ignorance, God's counsel. God will give him power, authority, great. So, he can execute exactly all the will of God, which is, for that period of time, judgment and wrath. But God loves His people. He loves His children. That's why a last message a last message comes from heaven through the prophet, the man of God, the exception in this calamity. Because my beloved brethren, in whatever bad thing there is on the earth, unbelief, foolishness, whatever bad thing there is on earth, there is always a small exception, a small remnant. A little bit which God preserves and in which God gives His word to. So He can give chances. And in one point of time, the last chance just before the destruction and the wrath of God. And now He uses Zephaniah. Zephaniah lives in this, in this environment. He is accused by this environment. He is reproached by this environment. But he also stands stable, steadfastly, immovable, and seeks the voice of God. He seeks the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And he is ready to do exactly in what his God and Lord commands him to do and sends him to do. But our main theme today, and the message today, is not, I believe, Zephaniah, but the me it's the message of Zephaniah, in which, in reality, is the message of God. The choice of God, as far as Zephaniah is concerned, whose name is characterized as the protection of the calamity is about to come, that God is the only protection in this calamity. And I repeat, that in every calamity, no matter how great it is, in every bad thing, bad seasons, bad times, no matter how harsh they are, there is always a message of salvation. And there's always a message of complete protection by God. To those who will hear with cautiousness, to the message of God, as a message of God, and to those who will accept, since they comprehend, the message of God as a command of the Lord. They don't hear it, and are happy about it, and then stop, but they hear it, listen to it, they're happy, they understand it, and they start to execute it. It's not great philosophical, it's simple, but it is perfect as far as the results are concerned. Today, therefore, this is our message, the message of God for the bad times that are coming. And people see them, many, they are uneasy, they strive, they are anxious, Others don't see it, they are at ease, they lean on the gold, the silver, the strength, but calamity is coming. Bad times are close, they're at hand. And here a small parenthesis, my brethren, for our country. 
And for all of Europe and all the world, things are not well at all. And we must put this world in our hearts. Not so we can start to labor as to protect ourselves, but for us to labor so we can subject ourselves to the will of God and the word of God. Tourism in Greece will drop 30%. That's what people are saying. As a result, more than 100,000 jobs will be lost in this summer in our country. More than 70% loss will be in shipping, resulting in tragedy. So much so for those who work in shipping, as much as the ships themselves and their worth, but also in banks who have given loans to these ships and they cannot be paid off. Building and building sites will be 70% down. With consequences and destructions. What is our hope? Jesus Christ. And let's put that in our hearts well. That in these times, the bad times that we are living in, only the protection of God will assure the continuation of our lives. Only the protection of God. That's why with great cautiousness today, let's listen to the message from heaven. Forgetting everything we lean on, in which we hope for, because it will break like Cain. There's nothing to lean on. Let not your mind go anywhere today. One is, our, is a place we can lean on. That's the word of God. And we accept this. We fear not what's coming, but we fear God. Because it is written, and the Bible cannot lie, that the fear of the Lord doesn't permit any calamity to draw near our tents. So therefore, in the fear of God we shall walk, in the fear of God we shall live, in the fear of the Lord we shall exist. Gather, gather therefore, you undesirable nation. Gather yourselves. What are you doing? Wake up to yourself, God cries out. Come into your senses. Come close now that you have time. Before the Lord passes a decree of your judgment, before it is voted and the results are birthed from it, before these things come that cannot be corrected, a nice invitation. Come now though, now that the welcome time is here, now there's a day of salvation, come now. Before the chance in which I give you for repentance passes by like chaff and cannot be found. Before the day passes like chaff. Two things is in the beginning of this message. A decision of God. A command that cannot be swayed before calamity comes, come to me. There is still a day of salvation for you. There is still a day of protection. Come, because the day will pass like chaff in which the wind takes away. Come therefore, before the wrath of God comes upon you before the feast of anger of the Lord comes upon you. He cries out to everyone, but he directs these words to a few, to that small remnant who have two characteristics in which, through which, in which they are separated from the group of people before the eyes of God. Come you firstly, you who are meek, and humble. 
Not you who are angry. Let's repent, my brethren. All who get angry, let's repent today. Not you who fight. Let's repent, my brethren, now. All who fight. Not you who have anger, wrath, complaint in your heart. Let's repent today. Come you who are meek and humble of the land. Please, Lord, make us, help us be meek and humble in the heart as you are Jesus. And you come who execute my judgments. You come who hear my word. You are convinced by my word even as sometimes it seems to you exaggerated or strange. And you execute my word. You obey my word. So a main characteristic, my beloved brethren, our relationship with people, meekness and humility, and our relationship with God, complete obedience to the perfect law of liberty, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's not asking for perfect people, very good people, great people, people who pray a lot, people who preach, people who prophesy, people who work. They are in another group. If they are not in their relationship with people, meek, humble, in the heart, and in their relationship with God, in complete obedience, at least as far as their intentions and motives are concerned, if not in the ability to do so. At least in the intentions and the will. I hear the word of God. I strive to do it, but I want to do it. Help me, Lord, walk in it. Come to me and do what now? Come to me. Come in my word. Come in your room and pray. Come into prayer. Correct yourself as far as your relation with people are concerned, become meek and humble in the heart, correct yourselves as far as God is concerned, accept the word of God as the complete, as the complete truth in your lives. And now, seek righteousness and seek even more to be humble. Come. Draw near to me. Receive words in your heart and on your lips. And seek the righteousness of God. Not your righteousness, nor the righteousness of other people. So God can kill them off for you. But God's righteousness. So you can walk in God's righteousness in your life. Seek even more so. Humility and meekness. Because then, maybe, it may be that you'll be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. If you repent, therefore, if you reject anything that takes away your meekness and humility in your life, if you reject and condemn everything that takes out of your life the complete obedience to the will of God, in the written Word of God. And even more so, if you seek God's righteousness in your relationship with God, and even more so, if you seek meekness and humility in your relationship with all people, then God says, in that way, only in that way, you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Because Lord your God will visit you and return you from your captivity. In other words, He will change the situation in which you are found in, in this moment. And there is a future of sorrow, desolation, problems, wrath, and in the end, destruction. God is able, when you seek Him, but with full consciousness upon your word, Lord, He is able to change curse into blessings. He is able to change calamity that's coming into good. And even though calamity is coming, 
good will come. He is able to change everything. Because you must learn that Gaza will be forsaken and Ashkelon will be desolate. Gaza and Ashkelon are the cities of the Philistines. Philistines means the word migrants and they are migrants from Crete. Thousands of years ago, approximately 1200 BC, there was um, natural disasters in that region and the rich and the powerful people of that period and that region they entered their ships and they migrated. That's why they're called Philistines. It means mig those who migrate. And they migrate to the coast of Canaan. They created a civilization, cities. And even up to this day, there is, the, there is Gaza in which such tragic things take place there. Of course, we don't care who's at fault. It's not our business. God did not place us as Christians, as judges. But we cannot say that there are tragic things going on there at this time. It is written for then, it is written for always. Gaza will be forsaken, Ashkelon will be desolate. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nations of Cherethites. Cherethites means Crete in Syrian. Word to the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites, the word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, land of Philistines. I will destroy you, so there shall be no inhabitant. And it continues further down with the same words of calamity in the land of Moab, in Assyria, and throughout all that region. And the small exception of God now. To those who accepted the message, and today, my brethren, I want all of us to accept the message. All of us, please. Meek, humble, and doers of the word. Meek, humble, and doers of the word. And drawing closer to God, for more righteousness and obedience in the will of God and for more meekness and humility. Increasing in being built up in meekness and humility. Verse 6 The sea shall be pastures with shelters for shepherds and folds for the flocks. And the curse shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed their flocks there, in the houses of Ashkelon, that shall lie down at evening. For the Lord, their God, will intervene for them, as we said, and return the captives, the small remnant, and return their captives. He will change curse into blessings. They will be found in safety where the wrath of God would have passed through beforehand, in safety, in prosperity, in joy, and in blessings. Why? Because everything is in the hands of God. Why? Because God does whatever He wants. Why? Because God loves. Not those listeners who forget, but rather those who do the Word of God. Amen.